In this comparative study, we will be exploring how the coming-of-age subgenres differs across female-centered films and male-centered films. The films we are focusing on are Boy, directed by Taika Waititi in 2010, and Real Women Have Curves, directed by Patricia Cardoso in 2002. Coming-of-age films often have conventions such as rebellious tendencies, overcoming obstacles, personal growth, change, and big life decisions, all which can be seen in both the films Boy and Real Women Have Curves. According to journalist Christopher McKittrick, a coming-of-age movie is a film that depicts one or more young protagonists facing a key moment of personal growth from childhood to adulthood. In many cases, a coming-of-age movie features the protagonist facing the first major conflict or personal decision in their lives or coming to a profound realization about their futures. These may include films portraying first romances, graduating from high school or college, religious maturity ceremonies, getting in trouble with the law, and other significant events in a young person's life. Despite both films being a part of coming of age genre, the differ in the characters overcoming obstacles and growth, which ultimately stem from gender stereotypes and expectations. To understand how the coming of age genre differs across male and female centered films, we must first understand the cultural context of both films. Boy takes place in the east coast of New Zealand in a Maori community of Waihau Bay in 1984. During this time, there was a societal event referred to as the Maori Renaissance where Maori people were rediscovering their culture and started language schools again to embrace their culture that was so heavily shamed, ridiculed, and punished in the past. Boy's dad, Alamine, is a character that comes from the generation of people who were made to feel like being a Maori was bad. Being a part of the generation in which Maori people couldn't get jobs and were accepted into mainstream society, Alamine represents the many people who went to cities where many gangs in New Zealand came from. Since people like Alamine had no place to go, felt like he was not accepted, and simply wanted to be involved, he ended up leaving the Maori community and his family. Boy represents the new generation of Maori people who embrace their culture and language, but who also have grown up without their parents who were told their heritage was bad. Boy wants to believe his dad left for a good reason and comes up with stories that try to justify his father's absence. This can be seen many times through imagined scenarios in Boy's head and in shops of drawings that represent Boy and his brother's imaginative thinking that often impact their view on their father. The director of the male-centered film, Taika Waititi, depicts his role as a father, Alamine, as a macho man through notions of mysteriousness, sex appeal, rebellion, violence, and danger. As Alamine comes into Boy's life, he becomes the role model that Boy has always been missing and introduces him to the more stereotypical hypermasculine life of manhood. Alamine goes on to encourage adult acts such as drinking, smoking, and sexual relations with girls to Boy and ultimately is the reason Boy was forced to grow up at such a young age and take care of his siblings as well as himself, treating him as if he is a grown man rather than his adolescent son. Opposedly, the female-centered film Real Women Have Curves takes place in East Los Angeles, an area heavily surrounded by the Latino community. During this time, the common gender role for women consisted of completing domestic household duties along with taking care of children. It is rare to see women working in jobs like those of men. While the film discusses these gender roles, it also touches upon the life of a Latino immigrant household. Ana Garcia, the protagonist of the film, is a daughter daughter of two hard-working immigrant parents, and while she is living in America, she yet must face the overcoming struggles of being Mexican-American, one being the financial situation of her family that prevents her from going to her dream school, Columbia. While Anna dreams of continuing her education to create a career, she is unfortunately forced by her family to work in the factory with her older sister to help maintain her business. This is very common in Latino immigrant households due to, to the difficulty of finding a well-suited job because of systematic oppression. Another obstacle Anna must face is the role she must follow that roots from her Mexican culture. The idea of marriage before sex and the preparation into becoming a housewife is often implemented, implemented into Anna's head repeatedly by her Mexican mother. As Anna spends more and more time with her mother, she is often reminded by her mom of, a real, of what a real woman should be. This becomes an obstacle for Anna as she wishes to depart from her own culture's gender roles and hopes to become more than just a housewife. 
As the film Boy comes to an end, the character Boy has overcome his needing of a fatherly figure to progress into manhood and comes to terms with his father not being the man he so heavily thought he was. Once Boy's father is believed to have left his family once again, Boy creates an excuse to his brother saying that he went to Japan to become a samurai, ultimately representing the second eldest brother's entrance into manhood in a similar way to how Boy would look up to his absent father. Boy grows to understand that he does not have to be like his father and instead can be himself. The film insinuates the boy's brothers will ultimately go through a similar growth and experience, creating a cycle that depicts the entrance to maturity and manhood. Throughout the film, Real Women Have Curves, Anna is constantly being reminded of her weight and is often body shamed by her mother. It's not a surprise as women are expected to look like the unrealistic bodies that are portrayed in the media. Through the loss of her own virginity, we can see how Anna's self-image grows. Towards the end of the film, Anna starts to self-appreciate herself after being body shamed by her mother several times. In the beginning of the movie, Anna's insecurities show when she goes on, on her date as she constantly mentions her weight and compares herself to slimmer girls. However, things start to change when she loses her virginity and finally reveals herself to the boy. As she finally gets to experience teenage love, she starts to build self-love as she tells the boy to look at her entirety. Even though Anna losing her virginity is an event that leads her to, to love herself, At this point of the movie, she has yet to grow as her confidence is still low. Particularly after she loses her virginity, she leaves the boy's house and she talks about how he will go on to find other better looking slimmer girls when she leaves for school. Her own self-growth is notably seen when Anna is working in the factory on a hot summer day. In this scene, it is extremely hot in the factory, so Anna decides to undress herself. Then, her mother criticizes her and comments that she looks awful and fat and that she would be way prettier if she had just lost weight. In this moment, Anna realizes that she is just more than her appearance as she accepts her weight. Everyone in the factory, excluding Anna's mom, start showing their stretch marks, cellulite, and body fat. This is eventually when Anna comes to the realization and acceptance of her own body as she concludes that real women are not perfect. Additionally, female-centered coming-of-age films often discuss the relationship between mother and daughter. Anna's mother often criticizes her for her appearance It makes it difficult to obtain a healthy relationship. Even when Anna leaves for New York, she finds it hard to bring herself to give Anna her blessing, as she does not agree with Anna going to college to study. Ultimately, Anna's relationship with her mother impacted her own image as she felt not good enough. But towards the end, she has no other option but to accept that her mother is not going to change. When comparing both films, we can see that men are often praised for their sexual relationships and or getting women, while women are usually put down and shamed by their families and seen as as an indecent person or improper. Additionally, they are also heavily encouraged to not participate in sexual relationships while men are fully supported. Women have an expectation to be innocent, while men have a more manly expectation that it at times include being a womanizer. While these films take place during an era where social media was not implemented into everyday life, it is still relevant relevant to today's society as these expectations and roles are still placed on men and women through the use of social media. Ultimately, Coming-of-age films are meant to show a young person's growth into something new, which is what these films do. But the growth in which they go through are dependent of their sex. Male-centered films are shown to depict the growth into maturity and manhood, while female-centered films are shown to depict the growth into confidence and loss of insecurities. This can be visually seen in the films Real Women Have Curves and Boy.